Good morning. I'm glad you're joining us at the CEIC and you have your little box of all kinds of fun art things to make. Today I'm going to show you how to use your canvas. And you know what? Canvases are what um, artists use a lot of times to paint on. And it's just a fabric that's usually stretched over a, a frame. This one's not. This is just glued on top of a piece of uh, poster board or cordboard or something like that to make it hard. So you're going to have that. And then um, if you watch Jennifer, Miss Jennifer's um, YouTube, she showed you that your paints are going to be coming in these little containers. So you, if, if you haven't seen what she told you to do, you need to, be, you need to put them flat on your table. And when you get ready to open them, you need to make sure you're carefully opening them so you don't get paint all over the table and all over you. And it's going to be acrylic paint, so remember that paint doesn't come out of your clothes, so you need to wear an apron or a smock or an old shirt if you're going to paint with these, just in case, because your mom probably doesn't want you getting your clothes messed up. Anyway, my paint is in other little containers, so I'm going to use that, but I wanted you to know about this is how your paint's going to come. And I would suggest not opening it all at the same time. Okay, you ready? So I'm going to do something simple. And as crazy as the world has been, I decided I was going to do a heart. Now, it's your creation, so you can make whatever you want to. But and I'm going to draw a heart on my canvas first. And I have kind of a funky heart. If any of you know me, I'm kind of funky. Okay, and if you mess up, you can always erase with your eraser. Okay, and then the first thing I'm going to do is I am going, I think I'm going to paint the background first. And the background will be uh, what's in back of the heart. Okay, so I'm going to be using acrylic paint. And I am not getting my paintbrush wet first. I'm just going to go ahead and stick it in the paint. And I am going to spread the paint. And I'm going to go all the way around where my heart is. And I want to cover all of that surface with paint, kind of spread it out. If you paint it and you think it's still too light, you could put more paint on it. I'm going to cover all of this background. And I want to tell you, we are missing not seeing y'all in person this year. This is the first summer. We haven't gotten to see kids at the CAC for camp for, I'd say, 100 years, but maybe longer than that. It's a long time, anyway. But we miss seeing y'all, but we thought this would be kind of fun if you could have art in a box. I think that's kind of cool. Then you can pull it out whenever you're bored or your mother wants you to do, a, do something for her. You can say, oh, I have to do my art, Mom. And then she probably forget and do it herself okay i'm turning this around i'm just going to kind of turn it around and move it just because it's easier for me to paint it that way it doesn't have to stay in one position when you're painting and you're going to notice i have a lot kind of a clump of paint there i need to go back and fix anyway this is kind of fun just and i think most kids like to paint because Moms don't really usually let you paint at home because it's kind of a mess. And they don't want a mess. It, they have to clean up or help you clean up. But this is art camp, so just make sure you clean your stuff up and don't have your mom clean it up. Because you know if you're at school, your teacher, your art teacher makes you clean up your stuff. she got too many kids to do it. Now, sometimes when I paint a canvas or a picture, I will not do up and down strokes like I've been doing on this. I kind of do something kind of like that, where it's kind of crisscross. So if you want to try that, you can do that. That's kind of a neat effect. And you notice I'm putting a lot of paint on, and then I'm spreading it out. You don't want to have big clumps of paint. Well, I don't think you do. Maybe if that's what you like. And I'm being really careful when I go inside my heart 
Okay, so up here I'm kind of doing this effect where I'm doing kind of crisscross with my paint and that gives a whole different effect as you can see than I did down here. So that's up to you. I think I'm going to go back and do a little more crisscross <clears throat> and spread my paint out like that. And then I am going to let this dry before I paint my heart. What do y'all think I'm going to do that? I don't want to get blue in my heart. Not unless I decide I want to do that later. So that now I left that plot I left that kind of straight, so that's up to you. And I am getting some paint. I want to go ahead and get the edges of my canvas blue too. I don't want it to be white. So it's really important that you have something underneath your canvas so you don't get paint all over your mom's table. Okay, let's see. And you notice I had my finger <coughs> in the middle of my heart or like when I turn my, my canvas, I don't want to get, I don't want to stick my hands in the paint, the wet paint. Okay, so I've gotten all my edges painted. And now I'm just going to let this dry for a little while. And I'll come back and see you in a little while. And we'll finish up. Make sure you wash out your brush when you're finished. Hello, we're back. And as you notice, my canvas has dried. And you can see I got a little bit of paint on the back, but that's okay. Now, I want to paint the inside of the heart. Now, I, this is going to take, I'm going to, and our red that we have is kind of a wild fluorescent. I don't know if I'd call it red, but anyway, maybe your, maybe your red will look better than this one, look more ready. Now, you're going to have to take your time, and I am wanting to have all of my heart red. Now, if I, it, it, whatever you're going to paint, you paint it the colors you want it. The one thing I would say would be, if you're going to use several different colors, and see I kind of came out of my heart there, if the paint wasn't dry, then I would have the colors mixing, which you might be okay with. I don't want it for this particular piece, the mixing. And as if you notice, I am kind of going back and forth. You do whatever kind of strokes you want. Just I would suggest you take your time. And you're going to want to, whatever you leave white, you might want to have a color on it. So I'm going to put a little bit more paint. And it is really important that when I finish using this brush, that I put it over and just let it dry by itself. Is that right? No. You've got to clean it out. So I'm cleaning it out in my water because I want to show you a brush that some, maybe even an adult use. See this brush? Doesn't that look? Okay, if I put it in the paint and I try to paint with it, it is all glued together and in fact this brush is going to have to be thrown away because uh, paint got left in it in fact i can't even clean it so remember to take care of your brushes as you get older and become a more experienced artist you will buy you might buy expensive paint brushes and you sure don't want to get those messed up so i'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back in a minute and do some detail work on it i'm back uh, and let me tell you this is a neat little trick if you don't want to spend a lot of time letting a color dry if you've got a hair dryer at your house that works great you might make sure it's okay with your mom to use it and a little trick with a hair dryer is you don't when you get ready to dry you don't put it right that close to your painting because you'll make your paint bubble up you want to come back and do it like that Okay, and we're not going to turn it on because it's too loud. Okay, now I am going to do some detail work, and I'm going to show you a little trick. Now, Miss Jennifer 
did dots on her um, ladybug, and she just used her paintbrush, uh, the bristles of her paintbrush. This is a little trick I learned, oh, long time ago, but you can stick your brush, the end of your brush, into paint, and then you can make dots with it, and they'll kind of stick up, and that's kind of a fun effect. Now, it's important, the first dot I made was, if you want your dots to be all the same size, you need to keep re-putting your brush in the paint, because this is what's going to happen. They're going to get smaller. See how they've gotten smaller? And that's okay, too. It's up to you. But if you want them to be all the same size, then you need to keep putting your paintbrush back into the paint. Okay. Now remember, this is what I'm doing. You can do whatever you want to do. If it's your creation, you might want to draw your pet. You might want to draw your brother or your sister. People are kind of hard to draw, I think. But um, You might want to do go outside and if you have pretty trees in your yard look at that you know it's up to you okay i'm going to stop with the yellow dots and once again i'm going to put my brush into the water try to get off as much paint as i can there's still some paint on it so i'm going to wipe it off this time because i'm going to use another color on this and i think i'm going to use black which sounds kind of wild but and it's really important that when you're painting that you don't drag your hand across what your your work because you don't want to get it. Um, and you can always turn your canvas around. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. That might be work better for me, so I don't drag my hand into my wet work. Okay, I'm going to stop with that one and. I think I'm going to do white, because white will show up good on this. I'm having to think what colors would show up. Oh, that's a big one. But that's okay. It's kind of neat to have a variety. That makes things sometimes more interesting. When you have a variety of sizes. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And I'm thinking about what else I'm going to do. So while I am thinking about that, I'm going to dry my piece. And I'll be back in a minute and we can continue working. Okay, so I used the hair dryer and dot, dried my dots. There's, they're still a little tiny wet, you can tell, because it's kind of shiny, but they'll dry. Now, while I was drying, I decided, I because I didn't know what else I was going to do with my heart, I decided I would put a C, so I'm going to use my pencil and draw, and I'm going to draw a C, I think y'all call them, that has like some body to it. And <clears throat> if any of you know me, you know I have a new grandson named Cameron, starts with a C, and so I'm going to first go over my orangey red with some white because if I try to paint a color on top of this orange red whatever it is not gonna show up that well and I'm not gonna be pleased with the way it looks so I'm gonna put white on there first then I have to go back to the drawing the drying area and then I'll come back and put color on top of that. So I'll see you in a minute. Bye. Watch. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I painted my C white. Now, that's supposed to block, the white should block out the red. So when I paint my letter blue, then it's going to look blue. It looks purple kind of to me, but anyway, that's supposed to be blue. It's going to be blue, and if you noticed, I'm probably, probably putting too much paint on my brush, so I need to spread that all around, spread it out, because I don't want to have big clumps of paint like you're seeing right now. 
And what I can always do is scrape my brush, take some paint off, scrape my brush, and get some of the paint off my brush because I put too much here. Now, if I let it dry, or I dry it with a hair dryer, and I want to add, make it darker, I can always do that. The only way I can make it lighter now is just to keep taking off paint. If you noticed, I have a lot of paint hanging on the edges of my letter, which uh, might be okay, but I'm going to, and you notice I'm turning my painting. I don't have to, it's not like stuck to the table, so I can move it around to make it easier for me to work on. Okay, now I'm going to put my brush back in the water, and I'm going to go back to the drying dry it with a hair dryer and then I'll be back to see you. Hey, I'm back. I dried my C. Now, if you want to go over it with another coat of paint, you can. I'm not. I decided I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, I think I'm going to put some dots inside of the C like I did inside the heart. So, and I have a really big paintbrush that I'm going to use because it's going to make great big dots. And really, you could use whatever you have at home to make dots with. You just, ooh, I just got some paint on that. So I'm going to real quickly take my finger. Oop. I can fix that, though. How can I fix it? How do y'all think? I could just put a little bit more blue paint on that. Now, I want to wash off the end of that brush. And not all the paint's going to come off because it's a stick. And then I'll wipe that off and get that cleaned off. Okay. Now, I have a little boo-boo there. But I can fix that boo-boo by applying a little bit of paint. And. This brush is so soft. I'm going to put that back in the water. Get out my other brush that I take off some of that water. And I am just kind of fixing. That's a cool thing about, about art. If you goof something up, you can fix it. Or maybe you like the goof better than what you started out with. And ooh, I still need a little paint there, don't I? You can still kind of see that. Okay. I just spread the paint out. Now, I can let that dry and go do something else, or I can stop with that. But I think I'm going to stop with that and let you do your thing. Okay? Hope you have fun doing your art. Bye.